Hello YouTube, it's Tittaputta. Hi people, I mean. <laughs> um, today I'm going to be talking about misophonia, misophonia story. If you search this and you have misophonia, know that I will be talking and if anything annoys you in this video, um, I'm sorry and I will try not to make certain noises. I don't know what will annoy you, but I really, really need to get this out. And I've planned on making this video because people are not talking about it like they should be. They talk about depression, suicide, those things are all serious, of course. Why is misophonia not talked about as much? Um, so I'm here today telling you my story of the three to four years I've been living with music. My story. I first saw signs of looking, when I realized I had misophonia, looking back, I was like, I remembered the times where I, I might have had it then. So <laughs> when I realized I had misophonia a few years back, some people had also said that they remembered having it even when they were even little, smaller. So... I first saw, I remembered signs of misophonia when I was 9 to 10 years old. When, um, I, whenever I was in a taxi with my family, my little sister would get up, would get up on me because the taxi moving, was moving really, like, turning the corner, and she'd squish on me, which was under, it wasn't under her control at all. Um, but I would get so angry, so enraged, so aggravated by that. I could, I didn't even understand, I didn't understand then, why then either. And now I know, probably, that's another one. I don't remember the other incidences, incidents, or, but um, that is one of the things I can remember. It was unco it was uncontrollable. It wasn't just a normal, not normal. It wasn't just a small. I hate my little sister. Oh, she's on me. Don't touch me. It was. I was really, really angry about her squishing on me, and I, <clears throat> even more because it kept repeating. Every time I went to, in a taxi, she would squish on me by accident because the car was moving. And, and yeah. Um, so back in September two thousand. No. So, it was more severe after the years went on. When I was 12 and 13, um, my mother would yawn so obnoxiously, and then I remember acting like, oh, no, it doesn't annoy me. It shouldn't annoy me to yawn. It's just a yawn, whatever. Um, I'm not going to repeat the yawns. I still can't stand it. I don't want to get emotional. I don't want any other people having this trigger as well. I'll just keep it up. She's had this very obnoxious yawn. Um, and it would always irritate me, but I always had to push it to the back of my mind. Like, why am I getting so angry about this yawn? Um, I keep saying yawn, I'm sorry. And then another point is, my sister, older sister would eat really gross. Very, she'd smack her mouth, she would just chomp on things, she wouldn't matter, she wouldn't care about how she was chewing, food would fly from her mouth and things like that. And that was a big, um, I found myself be staring at her sometimes being lost in a trance about how she was eating and I couldn't move sometimes because it was so, yeah. And lastly of, not last, lastly of this point I have made, I made certain bulletins of what, what I should be talking about. And lastly in the year when I was 12 to 13, I also did not chew um, good. I was disgusting the way I chewed. I'll admit that I, I was not a good chewer. Nobody told me to chew with my mouth closed. If they did, they still chewed with their mouth open. So. So I was, wasn't too mindful of my own chewing all the time. Then, September of 2012, um, I started a new school year, ninth grade, um, in France. I lived in France, I've been living in France for four years um, now. And I started a new school year. I'd, always, I'd already done a school school year back, but for some reason it triggered this year, that year, 2012, September. Um... I was, I don't know how to say this, I, I hope I don't, I'm not, it doesn't sound too scripted, but I'm just trying to read everything, trying to get everything in one video. Um, I was depressed, I was being alone, um, I don't want to cry, excuse me. So the thing that really triggered me during that year is, for some reason, excuse me, I don't want to cry, I don't want to cry, it's not going to help cry. My mother's yawning was very unbearable. I would be playing games in my room with my little sister, and she was on the top floor, my mom was, and I'd just hear her yawn, that same yawn, and rage would just boil over me. I'd have to cover my ears, excuse me, I don't want to cry, and, um, you know when you get so angry or something, you can feel your veins in your face and your head gets hot. That would happen to me all the time. And for some reason, I couldn't tell her to stop. 
I couldn't tell her to stop. Please don't do that. Or like, I just had, I just suffered with it the whole time. And um, so that went on for a long time. I was lonely, I was depressed. I was, I was having headaches. I was crying myself to sleep. And then came um. And then I was, I became suicidal for the first time in my whole life. That year was the first time in my whole life that I wanted to kill myself. Um, I'm not saying that in a cool way. All my life, even through the loneliness and things I've experienced in my early days, early years, I've never wanted to end my life. I've always wanted to stay here on this earth and finish living and having my purpose. But I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to die. I didn't want to do that stuff anymore. Um, and I started self-harming. But not, it wasn't that extreme. I don't know if that's, well, I was starving myself and um, I was trying to put hair things on the ends of on my wrist to cut my circulation because it felt like I was doing something bad to myself. Um, and then December comes along and another really bad point I remember is when we are watching Harry Potter during the Christmas time, we're watching Harry Potter and the Deadly Hollows, which we wanted to watch for a very long time. And mind you, I've been watching fa movies with my family for a very long time, and this is the year that I had to stop. Um, I remember my, mo my mom going forward over and over while watching, trying to get a closer look. They were talking and stuff, and I, just, I wanted to tell them to be quiet, but I was just so, so unbelievably angry, enraged, that she kept moving, making movements in the corner of my eye. And I just had to stop the movie early and go up to my room and cry. I screamed in my pillow. I wanted to hit, I had visions, visions in my head of me banging my head against the wall. Even when it, excuse me, even when it had already passed, it still stuck with me. Um, and she didn't check on me and that really hurt. Um, she didn't know that I was like that. And then Christmas was, um, it wasn't really Christmas. I was angry. I was hurt. I was lonely the whole time. She just saw it. My mother just saw it as a, an act of um, pu puberty or brattiness. So she never really questioned me. Um, so that's basically it was a fight or flight um, reaction in my body that was taking over me. I wasn't thinking. I didn't. Um, I made excuses and things like that, saying I was tired or I was on my period, that I just wanted to be alone, but I didn't really tell her. Um, excuse me. I don't know how to say this, this video seems weird to me. Um, things repeated. I ended up telling my mother... I don't know, during December, probably January, I don't remember when, it was probably sometime early of 2013, I told her about it, and she didn't believe me. She's one to be, sub no, uh, to be, um, passive, or, I don't know the word, right word right now, when you tell, I tell her something's wrong with me, oh, my neck hurts, or something like this, this, I feel sick, oh, no, it's nothing. But she never really falls through and sees if anything is wrong. So I told her, oh, mom, I found this thing online. This is after I, f I googled it and found out it had a name, misophonia. And she said, no, you don't have that. Are you serious? You don't have that. So I was just like, thinking, maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just going through a phase or something. And I waited a little bit longer, a week again. And I told her again, I really do have this right now. But again, she ignored me. She said she would look into it and then, um. Stuff still continued. She still um, wasn't mindful of anything, the chewing, and um, I wasn't taken seriously. But I was relieved when I found out it was actually something. I just I wasn't just crazy. I wasn't crazy because I'm not crazy. Um, so. Um, so I want to get into my self-harming section of this, which is not to brag in any way. I, I starved myself, I used hair things on my wrist, walking in front of cars and motorcycles to try and get hit by them. 
which is something I've never done, so it was really surprising to me. Um, and I, I want to end that part here because I already did two parts just now of the section of the paper that I was supposed to section off. Um, so I'll just have two more. I'll just put the other things into another another video. Um, I don't know if that was random or not. I hope it wasn't. I hope you understood the stuff I said. Um, this is just my story. And then after these story videos of my experience, I will start putting videos out uh, on how to help, how to get yourself help, how to help you, how to be, how I can be there for you during this time, or anything you're going through. If people are ignoring you, or they're not taking you seriously when you're suffering, um, I want to talk about that. So this is my misophonia story part one, and uh, I'll be back with another one. I might wear the same thing because I'm trying to film a lot of things in w in one day. So don't hate me for the wearing the same stuff and the same hairstyle. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please, if you have misophonia or anything like that, please comment. Please comment. Don't just overlook the video. Please comment. 